In this video, Summit City prosthetist Sean Brown and our friend Rita discuss the basics of below-the-knee suction suspension. All right, Rita, so today is delivery day, and we think this is one of the more exciting days because this is the day you go home with your prosthesis. It also is potential information overload, right? A lot of new concepts are brought in. Something that you'll see and you were able to experience is we were able to send your liner home with you early to start that process with learning how to take care of the liner and put it on. But we're going to review that whole process just to make sure that we feel good about how it is we don the liner, is it in place, how do we take it off, how do we care for it, and things to look for in the do's and don'ts. So I love the fact that you came in with your shrinker on. Believe it or not, that's not always the case for some of our, our patients. So with a liner. There's lots of options in the world that we select from from liners. In your case, we're using uh, an Oser liner. It does have a unique profile, as we talked about before. You'll see that the front section is thinner, or excuse me, thicker than the back section. That's important because the writing and the thick side is what's going to be oriented down the front of the limb. So whether the liner is on you or off you, it's always fabric out. So I think patients get in the habit of when they take it off, they just leave it inverted and they leave it over their prosthesis or bedside. Um, one of the, the negative aspects to that is, one, the liner can break down a little easier with the gel material. Secondarily, if it rolls off and it picks up anything from the ground, bacteria, if you have pets, you name it, this material is fairly tacky. It's gonna pick up that information from the ground and it's gonna lay it right against the skin. So again, to repeat, whether it's on you or off you, fabric out. We want to invert it. We want to know where the writing is, which I always like to grab the thick side, and that is where I'm going to orient it. Now, when we're in this position right here, one of the most important things is I see patients that want to pre-cup the liner and start with it slightly inverted. I would ask that you really work on having good contact with the bottom of the liner to the limb as we start to roll this on. And this is really about the fingertips and the back of the, the hand, like so. I think when people get a hold of it with their whole hand, they can start a wrinkle coming in. So I would just encourage, again, I've seen you do it. You do a great job. We want to use our fingertips as we pull this into place. And it's really about the thumbs and the fingers rolling on in a consistent fashion. So if I could ask, I'll have you slide my way just a few inches. Perfect. Now, since you have this liner and it's already been home with you, we've got it trimmed at an appropriate length. But visually, you can see that this writing is down the front and you will see that it's ever so slightly off to the inside edge. This is an acceptable area. You, you would not want to have the writing on the side of the knee or on the side, but if you're particular about it and we wanted to reorient that, we would just take it off. We would just move it a, a few degrees and we would just try it again. And you can see now the writing is right down the front. So the thickness of this liner really offers a lot of protection down where we feel like there's a lot of bony prominent features, right? The end of the bone where the, where the amputation had taken place, the beveling of the bone. There's a bone on the, on the side that's very important. So all of these areas that, that, that we want extra protection is one of the main reasons that's thicker. Secondary to that, when you bend your knee, this material has to pleat up. So they go to great lengths to try to thin this down so that this is a little more friendly to the user when they flex their knee. Thickness can really, in most cases, not be your friend when you're trying to flex that knee. So as we've talked about, after the liner is on the limb and we're preparing to put the prosthesis on, and we talked a little bit more about how much volume can come and go in the limb daily with use. And again, to reiterate, um, it's, it is certainly something that catches the new amputee off guard, just how volatile the limb is with regards to volume up and down. It's very much a cycle. We go to bed at night, things start to swell. And then that's one of the reasons the shrinker is so important as a maintenance tool as well, is we wanna, we wanna minimize the amount of swelling that happens at night so that in the morning, as you prepare to put your prosthesis on, we've caught you at the smallest, hopefully volumetrically, and then we're gonna spend the next several hours of use in the prosthesis on a sort of a trend of shrinking. And again, it's typically coupled with the more steps we take today, you know, the more likely we're gonna shrink. Now, we dispense a couple different thicknesses of socks. So 
The thickest sock that will go home with you today is a five ply, and that's indicated by a green band. The, the middle of the road, in terms of thickness, is a three ply, and that's indicated by the yellow band. And then sort of a filler sock or a maintenance sock is a one ply. These come longer, we've trimmed these, but we just trim them to whatever length we want for the limb. To put the sock on, it's a little bit like that first layer of the shrinker. We'll just pull it up. Again, I'll have you come my way just a few inches. Now, we don't want to pull this up really tight. We don't want to take a three ply and stretch it really taut because you can kind of see these fibers open up and it takes a three ply and it turns it into a two or a one because we've taken a lot of its thickness out by longitudinally stretching it upward on the limb. So, and this is what we call size-wise a medium short. So I'm even going to recommend that we reflect this down a little bit because again, we want as much skin contact for this sleeve to come up and make a good sealing surface that we can for the suction socket. So again, we want no pleats. You know, at the very bottom, we truly strive not to have any sort of pleats, uh, wrinkles in the back. And then that's when we bring the prosthesis into the picture. So again, we talked a little bit about through the test sockets that you, uh, you walked. There's a little bit of a horseshoe shape, right? We want that to be right underneath the kneecap. We'll bend that knee just a little bit as we start to work our way into it. And you can just see that this three ply is a very good level of tension that it's allowing you to slowly make your way into the socket. Once our kneecap is very close to this horseshoe, that's when you're gonna roll this sleeve up with a knee that's as straight as possible. And again, you'll go ahead and pull the pants up just a little higher, perfect. In order for suction to work well, as we've, as we've discussed, we need good skin contact with this sleeve because what's holding the prosthesis on is not this sleeve. It is simply an air barrier between you and the prosthesis. And as I showed you in the test socket, in this little coupler down here, there's a one-way auto expulsion valve. It lets any air that's inside escape through displacement and pressure. And then you can just slowly start to see as we push and pull, I'm really artificially helping push that air out. And you can start to see the sleeve is looking for uh, air. It's being drawn down tight against your socket and your limb. And you can start to feel with every step you take, it just gets a little more secure, a little more secure. So let's go ahead and bend that knee down. And I'll have you step down off of the table. And we know when we put the prosthesis on from the very get-go, we know we have air trapped in there. The more sock that you wear, the more fibers that are in there that trap air. So when you're in a very thin ply count, there's really not a lot of air trapped in there. So a few weight transfers back and forth is going to help probably purge the system of most of its air. But as you know, we do shrink as the, as the day goes on, so these socks become very important with maintenance. And you're going to layer these up over each other. So now we're in a three-ply, which what color is the band for a three-ply? Uh, yellow. Yellow, perfect. And we may very well, in, a, in an hour or so, have to go to a single-ply over top of the three-ply. And then really, it's all about layering up as you have more activity throughout the day. So go ahead and do that a few times for me and tell me if you start to feel. So we'll weight transfer back to the right, back to the left. And I would recommend doing this before you take off, you know, with your steps of the morning so that you feel secure within the prosthesis. If we talk about a little bit of a pro tip, if I have you climb back up here and we'll get back on the table. One of the things that I see is that this suspension sleeve, as you take it up and down, up and down throughout your daily use, certainly in the beginning, this is on and off quite a bit because we know how volatile that volume is, right? A lot of shrinkage, which means a lot of different socks, probably come into your day throughout the day. And then when you go to bed at night, even though you wear your shrinkers, things are going to swell back up to some extent. So it's very much this cycle. It's up and down, up and down, but all along you're getting smaller and smaller as a user. So as this sleeve comes up and down, one thing that I like to recommend is I like to pull this sleeve down to within, call it maybe an inch of the trim line of the prosthesis, and then I like to reflect it one more time. And what that does is it keeps the bulk of the suspension sleeve right around the top of the brim of the prosthesis. I sometimes see patients want to do this right here. 
And when that happens, this whole sleeve starts to work its way down the frame of the prosthesis. And when that lowers with certain types of limb length, you start to see this at the bottom, and then you lack the ability to have a good seal at the top. So that's why I encourage the double flip or double rollover. You're less likely to see this sleeve slide down when this method is implemented. Your team at Summit City Prosthetics and Orthotics is always here to help answer any of your questions. Reach out to us at any time.